Hello everybody. All right. Welcome to my live presentation. Just got a little pumped up a few minutes ago. You know, nothing like getting, keeping your body moving, getting some fresh oxygen, getting that blood stimulating, going through your veins and just feeling alive, right? Feeling alive. Just like it says behind me, be happy, be bright, be you. You want to be alive. Now, why is this important? You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, what's important if you're a human being, period, but especially for women, but pretty much everybody in general, is exercise, moving your body, whether you want to or not. So your body's always changing, always going through transitions, always going through lifestyle changes. And uh, it, it, it can either work for you or work against you, depending on what you do, depending on uh, your m mindset, and depending on how active you are. Now, most of the problems we have, if you're a typical American, a lot of the chronic aches and pains and um, a lot of the illnesses and diseases that we have, right, unless you have some other type of medical issue, medical problem, is basically due to two major things. One is a lack of exercise, and two is a lack of dietary uh, discipline, so to speak. So. When you eat the proper foods and you exercise your body, you stay healthy, you stay strong about 90 plus percent of the time for a very long period of time, not, if not your entire life. So uh, I've been exercising now since I was eight years young and it's been a lifestyle for me pretty much every single day. So if I don't go, if I miss a, miss a day or two of not exercising, I don't feel right. It's a habit. It's a habitual habit that I've been doing all my life. It's a good habit because what I've seen, what I've noticed during my career as a personal trainer, as a virtual trainer, um, I've seen a lot of people due to a, living a sedentary lifestyle, just having a rough time with it. You know, the body's in always aching, always in pain, chronic aches and pains. They end up being on medication. Uh, they have very limited mobility. They can't move. They have very little flexibility. Um, they're not able to touch their toes or do certain things, or at the same time, just by bending over, right? I, I, I once knew a person, all he did, right, was lean over as if he was trying to tie his shoes, and he threw his back out. Threw his back out, had to go to the hospital, had this problem, this damage, because of the lack of exercise, a lack of training his body. And as a result of that, he had some physical damage. So... If you don't use your body, if you don't build it properly, you don't exercise, you really do lose it. You lose the mobility, you lose the strength, you lose the bone density, which is very important if you're a woman. If you're a woman, uh, if you're over the age of 30, right, 30 years young, if you already have some children, then several things already start to happen to you whether you realize it or not. One, your metabolism slows down dramatically. Not everybody's the same, but it slows down dramatically. Uh, you start to lose bone density, so your bones become a little bit brittle. You lose strength, muscular strength and endurance if you're not exercising. But you're going around, you, you, you're going typically with your day, through, with your life, living, living that way. And what happens over a period of time, you start to lose those health benefits. You lose that muscular strength. Your metabolism slows down even more. You lose that bone density, so now your bones become weak and brittle. Now. You can, be, you can be very, very thin, right? You may not have to lose any weight, right? You might be a size four. Be very, very thin, but because you're thin doesn't mean you're healthy. Doesn't equate you being healthy. Doesn't equate you being fit, right? You can be thin and be a heart attack, a heart attack victim waiting to happen. Or you can be thin and have very weak, brittle bones. You can be thin, have very little muscular strength. And it's very important for a woman to have, keep her metabolism at a pretty high rate because the more lean muscle you have, now you don't have to have muscle like this, right? You don't have to have any muscle like that. But the more lean muscle you have, the higher your metabolism is. So let me, let me give an example. We've helped a lot of people drop 30 pounds or more in 30 days. Many of you have seen the posts, you've seen the videos, seen the testimonies. People are dropping it like it's hot, like a hot potato all over the place. But what happens is, and what, what, we, what we tend to, we've seen before, we see a lot in the past and still see today, you know, a person can drop 30 pounds, drop 60 pounds, drop 100 pounds, right? But if they're not exercising, 
right? Especially if you're a woman. If you're not exercising, then you tend to have that yo-yo effect. You drop the weight, you're not exercising, so you're not building any lean muscle. So what happens is your metabolism slows down. Just because you drop the weight doesn't mean your metabolism picks up. You drop the weight, right? If you still have the same type of eating habits, the same type of lifestyle, then guess what? Over a period of time, unless you change any of those behaviors, you're going to start to gain that weight back. And if you don't watch yourself, you'll put on all the weight that you lost, and in some cases, even a whole lot more. So in order to keep that from happening, once you drop the weight, right? And you can drop the weight without exercise. You do not have to exercise to drop the weight. That's what we have built our business on, helping people drop weight uh, without exercise. But once you drop the weight, it's very important to do some type of exercise because when you build that lean muscle, you're going to be able to keep that weight from coming back. When you build that lean muscle, now you have a live muscle. Muscle is alive, right? Your muscles are alive. They're metabolically alive. Fat is metabolically dead. That means it has no life. Uh, it's like stored energy just waiting to be used by you. So if you never do anything that cause your body to have to use that stored energy, you just stay fat. And sometimes you get fatter. <laughs> so that's how that works. It's like a closet. For example, you got to you know you're buying all these clothes from the from the you go shopping, clothes shopping, and you buy all these clothes, right? And you push these clothes into your closet. You put the clothes into your closet. Unless you remove those old clothes from the closet, pretty soon that closet is stuffed with a bunch of clothes, old clothes and new clothes, till it gets to a point where it can't hold it anymore. So your body's that way also, except your body just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. Right? If you're eating foods that are pretty much unhealthy, or if you're eating foods, period, right? For the most part, if it's not a lot of fruits, vegetables, seeds, mushrooms, plant-based foods, but you're eating a lot of meats, a lot of starchy foods, maybe some fast foods, maybe some sodas and stuff like that, guess what? A lot of that is empty calories, right? Some of those calories you have are called empty calories. It's not good for you. It's just calories. And it's not doing your body a bit of good. So guess what? If you're not burning that stuff off, Right? If you're not defecating it out your body, your body stores it in your fat cells. So it just pushes it, it's like that closet. Just put that food, push the food, that, those calories in your fat cells. And your fat cells expand and expand and expand and expand until eventually, guess what? You don't gain 30 pounds. You don't gain 50 pounds. You don't gain 70 pounds. Now you feel a little uncomfortable. Your knees start to hurt a little bit. You can't sleep that well at night. You're not going to the bathroom like you normally should or, or was before in the past. You might start getting migraines, right? You might start getting some skin issues. You might start getting some body odor. All these things start to change as a result of your body not being able to get rid of those, uh, those stored calories that's fat cells. So in order to keep the weight from coming back, once you drop that weight, you have to do some type of physical exercise. I know, I know a lot of people don't like to exercise. They don't like to do it because it's too painful. Oh my God, that stuff hurts. I don't want to do anything else. Is there, is there a better way? Yes, you can drop the weight without exercise. But I highly, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you that in order to keep that weight off and not go through that yo-yo effect, you have to do something. Go for a walk. Go for a brisk walk, right? If you live in a two-story house or an apartment something has some stairs, walk up and down those stairs several times. Right? Excuse me. Walk up and down those stairs several times. And then from that point, uh, you know, go to the track. Or if you got a park, go to the park. Take a jog around the park. Do something. Do some jumping jacks. You know, do something inside your house, right? You can do something as simple as this, for example. If you got a chair, we all can have chairs inside our house or apartment. You can just stand up and sit down, right? By simply standing up and sitting down, guess what? You're working your butt, you're working your legs. And in a lot of cases, depending on how low your chairs are, you work on your stomach. So a lot of things are happening and you're working that and you're building that cardiovascular because it's going to get tired a little bit. It's going to get tired. So you, the heart is the most important muscle. So now you're working that heart muscle also. And your heart naturally grows, right? Now your heart is a muscle. So when you go to the gym and you start to curl those weights, right? Push those weights above your head, whatever, you, whatever you're doing, you know, behind your head, whatever the case is. Your heart is also a muscle, so it gets stronger also. So your heart, that muscle naturally grows, but gets stronger. Now, there's different types, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, uh, 
People have hearts, enlarged hearts. That's not healthy. It wasn't built by exercise. It's a naturally in, you know, enlarged heart. Those, that's a medical issue. But when you're going to the gym, or maybe you're not going to the gym, right? Maybe you're just working out from home or going to the park, whatever the case is, your heart naturally grows from exercise. That's a good thing. You want that to happen because it's becoming more efficient. You just move from being a, a pinto to now a fine-tuned Bugatti or Ferrari, whatever, whatever you like, sports car, because now your heart is conditioned. It has muscular and uh, cardiovascular endurance. So now it can, it can work a little bit uh, do 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 the things that normally does or did before in the past with less effort, with less stress. So now your body over, over, overall feels a lot more relaxed. And that's something else that exercise does for you. When you exercise, right, it initially it's going to feel hard as heck. You're putting a lot of stress on your body. But when you go through the recovery phase, right, when your body cools down, because you're also going to raise your temperature, that's what causes you to sweat and perspire, you're increasing the heat, you're increasing your metabolism, your metabolism, and you're burning fat. So now things are happening inside your body. Chemical reactions happen inside your body. Electrical stimulation is happening inside your body. When you go through that recovery phase, now your body has a chance to heal itself, go through the recovery process, become stronger, more efficient, more flexible. Your skin starts to glow because now you're opening up those pores, you're getting rid of all those toxins, and depending on what you're eating, you're cleansing yourself out. So now you're feeling better and looking better and sleeping better. And you start to drop it like it's hot. So it's very important to exercise for a lot of different reasons. I can give you a hundred reasons, different reasons that to exercise. Like one, it, it, it keeps you nice and lean. Uh, it keeps your digestive system working properly. It keeps your, your, your heart at a nice resting heart rate, right? If you're sitting in one spot and your heart's beating over 100 beats per minute, okay, you're in trouble. Your heart's working too fast. But if you've been exercising for a while, right, doing some, some HIIT, some HIIT programs, you know, some, some interval programs, go hard, relax, go hard, relax, then your heart becomes very efficient at working and now instead of beating at 100 beats per minute or 90 beats per minute or 80 something beats per minute even even 70 beats per minute at a resting while you're sitting down it may be 50 beats per minute 55 beats per minute 47 beats per minute which a lot of cyclists their heartbeats are so very low because they do go through intense trainings right so that you, you want to become very very good at having a healthy and relaxed body and you have to be uh, consistent with what you're doing. Keep it simple. You don't have to go, you don't have to work out for an hour, right? People say, I go to the gym, I train for an hour, I train for two hours. That's too long. You don't need to train that hard, right? Unless you're going for a marathon or something like that or some type of endurance exercise, endurance training. You know, you're cycling 150 miles or whatever the case is. But the average person, right, you only need about typically to get a good training session in, and really get a good, good workout in, about 30 minutes or less. That's all you need. And it doesn't even have to be intense, right? It's, it's, the, it's, it's the, uh, the time that you put in, right? If you, if you do, let's say, minimal work for an extended period of time, you get benefits to your body, benefits to your health, right? Now, me personally, I train for about 30 minutes. I do a training session, train my body for an intense 30 minutes. What I do is very, very intense because I, the more intense it is, the better results you get from that training session, the better, the faster your body starts to change. So I, all my, all my training sessions that I do for myself are very intense and they're only 30 minutes. I used to do an hour. I used to go two hours. I used to go three hours back in the days, but I've learned that you don't have to train that hard, right? When you mix it up a little bit and you have a, a, a plan, you know exactly how to build the body, right? You build the body like you build a house, right? For those of you who are, have carpenters in your family, ask them, how do you build a house? What they'll tell you is from the ground up. They build a foundation first and build up. Well, your house, your body is a house. And the best way, the best results from training or exercising is building your body from the ground up, right? Start from the foundation. What's the foundation? Your legs. Your legs and your butt are the biggest muscles on the body, right? By, by um, 
Your butt is actually, your butt has, you have more muscle in the butt than any part of your body, believe it or not. I know some of y'all got some big booties out there, but um, the butt has more muscles than any other part of the body. So even, even if you got a little tiny, tiny uh, backside, guess what? That's still a very, very powerful muscle. So by training that muscle and working it, working it synergistically with your legs, right? You're working your legs and your glutes together, then guess what? You're gonna jumpstart your health, jumpstart your fitness, and you're gonna release a natural hormone. It's called the growth hormone inside your body, right? And it's, gonna, it's like taking a steroid. It changes everything about your body. So if you're a lady, it's very important for you to do some type of exercise. If you're a guy, it's very important for you to do some type of exercise because also it increases your bone density. See, as a person matures, right? You go through life, you have an exercise. Uh, let, me, let me share this right quick. I was reading a post yesterday. Uh, I don't know the person personally, but I was reading the post. I forgot what it was about. something, And, and the person said something very, very profound. He said uh, he noticed, with talking about his body, his own body, he said he noticed, I've got the exact verse, I'm kind of paraphrasing, he, he noticed how he feels because he hasn't been exercising for most of his life. So that when I read that, so wow, that's a profound statement he made. He said he noticed how he feels because he hasn't exercised for most of his life. Which means his body is either having some type of aches and pains, some stiffness in his joints, he feels out of shape, he feels maybe unhealthy, and he noticed that in, within himself because he has not been exercising for years of his life. Now that's, that, that's, that's very, very profound because that's what happens with a lot of people, right? If you're not exercising, sooner or later you're going to notice that within yourself. You're going to notice something. You may have, if you live in the city, right, I used to live in New York for 22 years, right? Sometimes I, I would catch the public bus, the MTA out there, you know, the bus, and I have to run to catch the bus. Well, thank God I was always been in shape. If, the, if I see the bus stopped at the bus stop and it's getting ready to pull off, the last person has just gotten on, I have enough energy and speed and endurance to run to catch that bus before he pulls off. Now, most times I would catch the bus. Sometimes I might miss the bus but I, I was just a little too late taking off. But I've, but, but, but I've seen people run maybe half a block, <laughs> maybe a quarter of a block, and you would think they're about to have a heart attack. And people you would look at and think, okay, they, they're not fat, they're not overweight, they got a slim body, they look healthy, but they're very unhealthy. And you can tell by the way they're breathing, like, oh, God, I feel like they're about to kill over and die. So, most people are not exercising, but they want to drop weight, they want to live healthier, they want to get a better, have a better quality of life. So, in order to do that, we, you have to do the things you don't want to do, and that's exercise. Doesn't matter what it is, right? If you simply, again, like I said, if you're in your house like, like we are right now, um, you know, you can do the jumping jacks. If you, if you have the ability to jump, right, your knees are not bad, then do jumping jacks. Jumping jacks is a cardiovascular, somewhat like a plyometric exercise where you're jumping up and down, right? That when you're jumping and landing on the ground, you're causing impact to your muscles and to your bones. So that shock, that shock therapy, right, is stimulating your nervous system. So a lot of things are happening inside your body. You feel your breath. <sighs> You know, you might be breathing hard. Your heart is racing, but your nervous system, because that impact is being shot and your bones are being stimulated. So guess what? You're also increasing the bone density inside your knees, inside your body. Strengthening your nervous system also. Strengthening your heart, right? Improving the efficiency of your lungs. Your body's taking in more oxygen because oxygen you're breathing deeper. So now your cells are getting more oxygen. You might feel fatigued. Oh God, you know, ready to, ready to quit. But you just did your body a huge, tremendous justice by doing those couple of jumping jacks. Might be 10 jumping jacks, right? Might only be five jumping jacks. Doesn't matter where you start, right? It's what your goal is. You set a goal. Let's say you say, right now, I'm going to do 20 jumping jacks. And you haven't done 20 jumping jacks in 20 years, <laughs> right? It's been a long time. But you say, I'm going to do 20 jumping jacks, right? And you start doing jumping jacks, you might get to five. Oh, God. Woo. Jesus. Oh, my God. 
five jumping jacks. But guess what? You got those five out the way. You did those five. So if all you're able to do is five jumping jacks, do those five jumping jacks every single day or every other day until you get to, to seven, get to 10, get to 12, get to 15, and then you, get, and then you got 20 jumping jacks. And guess what? Now, now you, can, now you can congratulate yourself, not with a cheat meal, because the cheat meal that got you in that first, that got you unhealthy in the first place. And some of y'all cheat too much, right? So you want to congratulate yourself with something healthy, right? Something you can go, you know, buy you buy yourself a purse if you're a lady, or buy yourself a, a, a nice suit, whatever, a wallet if you're a man, whatever the case is, or treat yourself with a smoothie, something healthy, healthy to eat, because you made it to your goal. Your goal is to do 20 jumping jacks. It took you four weeks to get there, right? But you got there, and now you're doing it. So guess what? You can no longer do less than 20 jumping jacks because you know you can do it already. So now you set a higher goal. But well, now I'm going to do 40. And make sure that goal is slightly out of your reach, right? Not too far that you get disillusioned, but slightly out of your reach and, and you see it as being attainable. So now you have something to shoot for. So now you know you can do 20 jumping jacks. So now you do the 20. Now you're going for that 40. You might get to 25 or, or 26. Oh, man. Whew. Have to take a breath. That's all right. Because you got your 20 in. You didn't got the 20 out of the way and did six extra. So you got 26. You know you can do 26. Guess what? Take a quick breather. <sighs> all right, I got 14 more to do. Do the, do the next 14. Get that 40 done. So eventually you can do it all at one time. And during your journey, you will see changes and transformation in your health, in your fitness, in your body. And all you're doing is winning. And then keep it simple, right? Jumping jacks, maybe some push-ups, or maybe some crunches, maybe some, some standing up, call these squats, chair squats, and you're just standing up, sitting down, right? But you're doing something, and you're building your house from the foundation up. You're building your body. You're strengthening your muscles. You're boosting your metabolism. You're increasing your bone density. All these things start to happen. Your, your thinking becomes clearer. Your skin starts to have a natural glow. Right, your your breathing becomes less less. Uh, you, you start to breathe a whole lot easier, right? You can sleep better. You go into the bathroom now, making bowel movements at least two times a day instead of two times a week, right? Things start to change. You feel better. You have more energy. You don't have that sluggish feeling around two o'clock, twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Don't feel like taking a nap. Don't feel like crashing. You feel better, and you're excited about where your life is going, right? And now, just be consistent. And just like you plan for everything else, right? You plan for vacations. You plan for trips. You plan for weddings. You plan for birthdays. And unfortunately, people know you plan for funerals. But you plan for a lot of things in your life. Plan to be healthy. Have a game plan of exercises you're going to do, right? Don't put down something on paper or pick an exercise that's super, super hard because it's going to turn you off. And you're gonna, it's going to make you become disillusioned. You're not going to want to do it, right? Keep it simple. Just put down on paper simple exercises that you can do, but that's going to be challenging. It's going to challenge you because when it challenges you, it changes you. So you want to do something that you can do three, three times a week, uh, four times a week or five times a week, right? But be consistent. It has to be more than twice a week. But if, you, but if you're going to... Commit to this, right? If all you're able to do right now is twice a week, then be, be consistent with doing twice a week. And on the days you said you're going to do it and the times you're going to, you said you're going to do it, because now you're building up that discipline, building up that habitual discipline, that habit. And then when you feel like you can do at a, at a third day in there, add a third day in there. Be consistent with that third day. And then you're going to go four days, five days. Maybe you got maybe you got three days of doing strength training, right? And you got two days of doing cardiovascular exercises. They call them aerobic, aerobic exercises, right? Whatever the case is. And here's the thing. You don't have to lift weights. You don't have to go to the gym, right? I, uh, my, my health and fitness journey started when I was eight years young. I didn't have any weights. <laughs> All I had was my body. Right? I did something called calisthenics, which is a body weight exercise. I did push-ups. I did jumping jacks. I ran. Uh, I did some knee bends, which is called squats right now. I did, every, I did dips. I did everything with my body, and I, that's how I built my body. That's how I got my first six-pack. You know, I was growing up as a, as a child. And I just kept 
being consistent. I love how it felt. I love that burning sensation, right? I love how my body was taking shape and became a, 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 a habitual lifestyle for me. So you don't have to go to the gym and lift weights. Because here's something else. I lifted weights for a long period, uh, long period of my life. And lifting weights is very good. It gives you fast, explosive growth, right? Your body can change very, very rapidly by lifting weights. But here's the downside about lifting weights. So if you're out there lifting weights, if you do it on a daily basis, here's something I want to share with you because uh, there's a plus side to lifting weights and there's a downside to lifting weights. When you lift weights, like I said, you can get explosive growth. You can get muscle, you can get body changes very, very rapidly if you're training intensely, right? You've got intense training sessions, your body will change fast. Your strength gains will change fast. But here's the thing about that. And here's why I like calisthenics. I'm gonna show you, the, I'm gonna tell you the difference in, between calisthenics and lifting weights. Now I've lifted weights for years of my life. I've done calisthenics for years of my life. Here's the major difference on why I choose calisthenics. When you lift weights, one, true, you can run the course of having a potential injury, right? You can injure yourself. You can tear something, you can get injured a lot quick, a lot easily because you're lifting something called artificial weight. That's not a natural weight. That was something that's put together, right? And also, it can damage your joints, right? You can, you, your ligaments in the long run. When you, when you retire, so to speak, or you back down a little bit from lifting weights, you oftentimes find you got some injuries, right? Some joint issues, some injuries from lifting weights, right? You can tear your rotator cuff if you're doing bench presses the wrong way, right? So you can have some damage from lifting weights for a long period of time, especially heavy weights, not light weights, right? But you can do, you have damage from that also from lifting light weights. You know, the more repetitions you do, the more damage you do to your, to your joints, uh, to, your lin to your tendons, to your ligaments. Because it's high repetition, maybe you're doing high, uh, eventually doing heavy weights. But when you do calisthenics, and there's, there's a name for this. Years ago, I used to hear this as a child. When you do calisthenics, you build that inner strength, right? Inner strength. Now, what that means is when you do calisthenics, your strength, your tendons, your ligaments, your joints, they kind of get stronger together at the same time. Well, whether when you're lifting weights, you blow up quick. You can get biceps real fast. You can get triceps or chest real fast, right? So your muscles grow very fast, and oftentimes they grow a lot faster than your joints, than your tendons and your ligaments. But when you're doing calisthenics, right, everything's working together. Your strength, get, you, you have tremendous strength gains, your muscle gains, but at the same time, you're strengthening your tendons, your ligaments, your joints, everything gets stronger pretty much at the same time together. So when you lay off of doing calisthenics or body weight exercises, you don't have that joint issue. You don't have that tendon issue. You don't have those ligament issues because you didn't put that tremendous amount of stress from the artificial weights on your body. So your body's able to recover a lot faster, have less issues. Okay, call came in. So I may have to pause this video for one second because Maya's trying to make a phone call, but don't go away. If I pause it, I'm going to come back, continue this, or continue to tune in. But again, uh, I'm just calling back right now. Anyway, but anyway let, me, let me just continue. So it's, you can stay at home right now and just use your own body to build your body. Right? That's what I do. I use my body to build my body. People say, man, they see me in the grocery store wearing a, wearing a tank top, some short sleeves. And man, what, what gym do you go to? And I say, I don't go to a gym. I just do pull-ups and push-ups and dips, bodyweight exercises, and they're blown away. So, wow, you gain all that muscle doing that? And I say, yes. And then when I tell them I'm vegan, or raw vegan, they're like, wow, oh my God, raw vegan? How in the world, what are you doing? You know, well, what's your program? What's your regimen? Because people have an image in their mind of how a vegan is supposed to look, especially a raw vegan. Yep, there's another phone call. I don't know who that is. But anyway, a raw vegan. So... Uh, when you do things the right way, right? When you're feeding your cells the right way. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay, thanks for, thanks for staying. So when you do things the right way, you can put on a lot of muscle mass because you're not, uh, you're not starving your body for one thing. You're eating healthy foods that have live enzymes, right? It has tons of minerals. 
And let me talk about that right quick. Um, minerals. Now, minerals are more important than vitamins. People pop vitamins every single day, taking vitamins and multivitamins, all this stuff every single day. But minerals are more important than vitamins because minerals, uh, one, you need minerals to build strong, healthy bones, <laughs> right? You need minerals to have a, a powerful, um, fully activated nervous system. You need minerals to keep your heart beating. You need minerals just to have the power of thought. So minerals, plays, minerals play a huge part in your life. And it's minerals that allow the vitamins you take to work in the first place. Now, there's different ways to go about getting minerals. You can get minerals from your diet, right? But if you have a typical American diet, you eat a lot of, you're eating a lot of meats, a lot of carbohydrate, starchy carbohydrates, uh, you know, drinking dairy, things of, that na things of that nature, cheese, things of that nature. You're not getting 100% 100 100 of all the minerals that your body needs. Right, even the vitamins. Because if you gotta cook some food, right? If you cook meat, chicken, fish, uh, steak, egg, whatever the case is, when you cook that food, some of the vitamins or some of the nutrients, right, even some of the minerals are lost. It's in the oil, it's in the water, right? It's 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 not a hundred percent of what your body needs. And oftentimes over a period of time that leads to constipation, because meat has no fiber, right? Leads to migraines, leads to skin issues leads to uh, uh, arthritis, leads to gout, leads to be having a pot belly, leads to people having a stroke, leads to a lot of different things over a period of time, especially if you're not exercising. So that's why it's important to exercise. At the same time, you want to consume foods that have not only minerals, not only vitamins, but also has oxygen. And you can only get oxygen from one type of food source, and that's plants, raw plants, raw vegetables, raw fruits, seeds, mushrooms, things of this nature, right? Seaweed, algae, you know, um, sea plants. These are the foods you can get oxygen from, which is the most important nutrient of all. Without that nutrient, you won't survive. You won't live, live too long. And you deprive yourself over a period of time of oxygen, you also cause premature cell aging, right? You, you, you age prematurely. So I'm going to talk to you about something right quick. Uh, a few things I have to the side of me. You probably can see it in the frame just a little bit. But a few things that I do on a daily basis, Maya does on a daily basis, Joshua and Matthew, we give them every single day to help keep our bodies healthy, strong, by fortifying, excuse me, <clears throat> that's in my throat, <clears throat> fortifying, some, fortifying uh, supplementing our foods. So one thing we we do every single day is drink water. Now, I know a lot of people like bottled water. So I'm showing some bottled water. Uh, when I go out to shop, um, now you can make your own, this is alkaline water. This is Iceland glacial water. You can see it says pH 8.4. I know it's backwards how you're looking at it, but pH 8.4. This is naturally alkaline water. So if you go to the grocery store, you're gonna buy a bottled water. You want to look for water that has that symbol on it. Those letters, those pH followed by a number. That tells you the water is alkaline. And you want to get the naturally alkaline waters, right? This is 8.4 alkaline. Now our bodies maintains about 7.42, 7 uh, our blood. Our blood has a natural alkaline about 7.4, 7 7.3. This is 8.4 pH. And I call this living water. Now people say all water is the same. No, all water is not the same, right? You can drink toxic water. And there's a lot of toxic waters out there in the grocery stores. They go through a process called reverse osmosis, right? So if you pick up a bottle of water in the grocery store and it says reverse osmosis, that just means it's recycled water. It goes through a system, reverse osmosis, recycled, and they bottle it and they put it back on the shelf and they sell it to you. That's not the best water to have. Right? They might add a few minerals in there to kind of make it alkaline, but it's still going through that reverse osmosis. This is, this is naturally alkaline, untouched by man. The only thing man has done is bottle it at the source. This comes from Iceland, the country of Iceland itself. So the spring, the water shoots up, they go out there and they bottle it, right? And they put it in the shelf and they sell it to you. This is another water called Fiji, natural artesian water. 
Now this water also has a natural alkalinity of about 7.7 .7 pH. You can't really see it, it's really, really small in the back, but it has about 7.7 .7 pH alkaline. This also is untouched by man. It comes up, it's a spring, uh, they bottle it at the source, they put it in the shelf, they sell it to you. These are both alkaline waters. Now this is a bit more alkaline than this. Then you have other waters also that has a like an 8.88 .88 pH, right? Those are the highest natural alkaline waters. They have other waters like uh, essential waters has 9.5. Uh, there's another water called alkal alkalite, which is 10.0 pH. But those waters, those waters are done in laboratories, pretty much. I call them laboratories, right? Uh, the, the most natural alkaline water you can get naturally from springs is, uh, it has a pH of 8.88 pH. So this is 8.4, so this is why if I don't have this one, I have another one uh, called the Himalayan, Himalayan, I think it's called Himalayan. It's come from, it comes from Hawaii, what's the name of it? But it's another type of water I drink, if I drink a bottled water that's naturally alkaline. Now this is called living water. And again, not all waters are the same. Some waters are very toxic to your body, right? And when you drink it over a period of time, you, you know, you drink, you drink in water. Um, and and there's, there's another thing about testing also, the, you know, the, the FDA doesn't test bottled waters like it does tap water. Tap water is tested by, goes through like 11 different types of tests. Bottled water has to do about four or five or six. And you know, there's, there's talks about that. But here's the thing about the tap water. They have so many other chemicals that they add to the water to kill the bacteria, to kill the germs. And those chemicals, over a period of time, have been proven to cause cancer in the person's body, the human body. So that's why we're going to stay away from tap water, right? Because it's not, it's not pure water. It's got a lot of chemicals to kill stuff, but it's also killing people over a period of time. So, and there's ways you can make your own natural alkaline water, right? You can buy some regular spring water. Buy some regular spring water, right? Deer Park water, whatever the case is. And you can put lemon or lime or five there's five plants you can put in you can cut up the plants put it in the water let it sit for 24 hours and just start to drink it and now you got what's called infused alkaline water which is one, pretty much the best water all comes from plants it leached inside the water now you're drinking it and you're purifying your body your skin starts to clear up your blood pressure starts to, starts to uh, stabilize things start to change inside your body as a result of drinking alkaline water which i call living water so you want to drink water every single day also so in addition to exercising you want to drink water because water metabolizes or breaks down or helps you digest fats that you consume carbohydrates that you consume and protein that you consume and it's like it's like oil it's like oil for the body it lubricates your joints your, your ligaments your tendons your bones your muscles keeps you hydrated keeps your heart beating the way it should be Right, because you're drinking, putting this natural oil, I call it natural oil, just like, you put, just like your car needs oil, right? If, if, if your car is low on oil, runs out of oil, guess what? You can blow the engine, you can crack the engine block. And, and now you're stuck like Chuck on the side of the road somewhere. But as long as that car has the, the oil that it needs, right? You got some gasoline in there also, and some transmission fluid, everything else, it runs smoothly. So the water is just like that. When you hydrate yourself on a daily basis, your body is able to run a lot more smoother with less stress on your body. Just like, like having less stress on your car's engine. Water keeps the stress down. Keeps your body nice and cool, right? So your body doesn't overheat also, right? That's like when you exercise, you're going hard, you got this thirst, you build up this thirst, right? You, you, you don't use up all, a lot of that water out of your body, so now you gotta drink some water Keep your body cooled off. Keep your body lubricated. Keep, keep everything lubricated. So now you can go even harder because now you're hydrating yourself. You're replenishing yourself with what you lost. So you want to drink water, right, to help metabolize the foods that you're eating, the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates, and just to feel great, just to have more mental clarity, all these things. Because water is liquid oxygen, right? Liquid oxygen. So now you're getting more oxygen inside your body, right? Inside your tissues, inside your cells, so you got more energy. So that's the first thing we do. We drink water before we go to bed at night and drink water when we first get up in the morning. And sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night and drink some water also. So you stay hydrated throughout the whole period of time, right? Because here's what happens. Uh, what, what's been discovered is 
a lot of times when a person has heart attacks, right? Right? They wake up in the morning, 4 o'clock a.m., 6 o'clock a.m., uh, and they have, have a heart attack. It's oftentimes they're dehydrated. Think about that. So it's very important to drink water before you go to bed, not that much, and drink water as soon as you wake up. Because you, you've been fasting, right? If you sleep for four hours, guess what? You've been fasting for those four hours. You sleep for eight hours or six hours, you've been fasting all that time. No water, no food, you've been fasting. Your blood pressure starts to lower, everything starts to slow down. And right before you wake up, right, your body sends stress hormones inside your bloodstream. Now, you, you're asleep, but it sends stress hormones inside your bloodstream, gradually increases your heart rate, and then you wake up. So your body does a lot to keep you alive. So it's very important to make sure you invest in your health because health is truly your wealth. So aside from water, right, you're hydrated, that's your liquid oxygen. Then from there, uh, the next thing we do, we take some Nutriburst or liquid crack. Why? Because it's got 72 minerals. 72 minerals, it's got 22 nut uh, phytonutrients, it's got 19 amino acids, it's got 13 whole food greens, it's got 12 herbs, and it's got 10 vitamins. Plus it has a 98% absorption rate. That means it goes straight to the bloodstream like you're taking an IV. Go straight to your system. There's nothing to digest. As soon as you take it, like, wow. Right? Go straight, you feel it just like that. And the minerals, there we go, talking about minerals again. The minerals are important because those minerals are electrolytes. And your nervous system is electrical, so it needs those electrolytes. Your heart has its own electrical system, so it needs those electrolytes. Those electrolytes. So does your brain. Right? So does your muscles. Just to move your muscles, that's an electrical action. That takes electricity to move your muscles. To move a muscle... Electricity has to fire just to move your body. So if your body's all, no, your, your, your circuits aren't working right, guess what? You're going to be in a lot of pain. That's why people have, who have fibromyalgia or neuropathy, they're in a lot of pain because the, the neurotransmitters, right, the nervous system is not working properly or overstimulated, being overly stimulated. So now it's causing a lot of pain. So it's important to have those minerals to keep your, your, your nervous system balanced and uh, functioning properly. So we have the Nutriburst, right? Go straight to our system. Then from the Nutriburst, we have the sea moss gel. Now, this is the cactus sea moss. I talk a lot about this, about the benefits of this, especially uh, for benefiting the nervous system. Now, some of you who follow my page have seen the testimonies about the sea moss cactus gel, right? It speaks for itself. That's why I love getting these testimonies from my customers who have lupus. A customer who have who was diagnosed with, with diagnosed with MS, right, multiple sclerosis. Um, my customers who have uh, been suffering from migraines for almost twenty years. Customers who uh, had anxiety issues, right, can't go to the bathroom. Whatever the case is, skin issues. Whatever the case is, and they give me their testimonies, and in less than thirty days, they've been turned around, right. One lady been suffering from test suffering from migraines for almost twenty years of her life. Her name is Dawn. She took the sea moss, this one right here, for 26 days. She has been migraine free for the first time in almost 20 years. That's a powerful testimony. Another lady, uh, I forget her name, right? Maybe she's watching. But another young lady, Deborah, her name is Deborah. Deborah Lyles Ortiz. She lives in Miami. Now she's in Miami right now. She lives in Georgia. She was diagnosed with MS last October. Right? She had numbness in her body, tingling, tingling in her body, went to the doctor, the doctor still told her those are symptoms of MS. She's been taking the cactus sea moss gel for three months, went back to the doctor, retested her. Now he's asking for a second opinion because he can't find nothing wrong with her. He can't find nothing wrong with her nerves. Powerful testimony. Right? A young lady who has lupus. Lupus is a, is a very painful, deadly autoimmune disease. Um, goes it, it, it destroys its own tissues, right? Destroys the, 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 the ability of the kidneys to function properly. And eventually, people, they don't have a turnaround, they wind up dying. So I had a friend who died years ago from lupus, young lady in, in New York. Her pancreas was inflamed. Took the cat to see monster. Her sister bought it for her. Her sister met me, bought her a, a month's supply of this. Three days of taking the cat to see monster. Her pancreas has no more inflammation. The doctor retested her. 
She's inflammation free in her pancreas. Powerful testimony. And there's lots of testimonies about that, about the pastor who's in the hospital. He had a stroke. He was paralyzed, uh, partially paralyzed, had no sensation from the left side all the way down. The doctors told him it's going to be months and months before you get feeling back on that side of the body. Four days after taking the crack, the crack of sea moss, he said he already started having sensation back in that part of his body. The pain he was on was gone in, uh, in 30 minutes. <laughs> The, the meds he was taking weren't even working. So it's powerful, powerful, powerful. Now, but let me get back to the topic. I get carried away talking about these testimonies. Sea moss has 92 minerals, right? 92 minerals out of the 102 minerals that our bodies need. So it comes back to this. If your body is devoid of minerals, right? And we take this. We drink the water. We take the Nutriburst. We take the sea moss gel because it's very high in minerals. It has 10 vitamins, I'm sorry, 6 vitamins, and also does a lot of things for the body, right? So if you have low energy, guess what? It's going to increase your energy. If you suffer from anemia, guess what? It helps alleviate, get rid of anemia. Anemia is just low red blood cells. And if you have low red blood cells, guess what? That means you got poor nutrition, and you also have very little oxygen coming to your tissues. So you feel fatigued a lot. You might start to pass out. We had a young lady taking the sea moss, uh, taking our fight product, which is another one of our products, it's made from uh, uh, spirulina. And she was taking this product and she said all the things she was suffering with from anemia are gone. This just happened yesterday. We just found about this yesterday. I, I, I gotta ask Maya what, what, what lady's name is, but it's gone. Sea moss and fight. Fight is another product that we have that's made from spirulina. Spirulina comes from the ocean. Sea moss comes from the ocean, right? So there's lots of benefits from eating seaweed or spirulina or chlorella that comes from the ocean, packed with minerals, packed with protein, packed with nutrients, packed with oxygen, which is the most important nutrient your body needs. So we take this on a daily basis, right? And the best time to take this, again, like the Nutriburst, is you take take this take the sea moss 30 minutes before breakfast, right? And then take it again before you go to bed at night. Now you can do it three times a day, but the reason why it's more impactful uh, before breakfast and before you go to bed at night, because again, it comes back to fasting, right? Before you go to bed or, or, or while you're sleeping, when you take this before you go to bed at night, you're sleeping, you're not eating anything. So you technically, you're going through a fast, right? So now you're fasting while you're sleeping, you're not eating anything. So now the only food that your body has to consume is that sea moss. It absorbs into, it, it absorbs into your system through your intestines, through your colon. So now you feel the result within 24 hours. Then when you wake up in the morning, guess what? You're getting more sea moss 30 minutes before breakfast. So now during that time, that phase of sleep, that sleep time, you had sea moss before you went to bed. Now you just woke up in the morning, you're having more sea moss before breakfast, now you're filling your system up with sea moss. And you're getting all these minerals inside your system with all these benefits, plus six vitamins. So you feel great, you feel fantastic, and you're pain-free. If you're in pain, you're pain-free within 24 hours. That's why I say, well, take this before you go to bed at night and take it before breakfast. If you want to do it a third time, do it before you take lunch. But the most effective time to take this is before breakfast, 30 minutes before breakfast, and before you go to bed. You feel the result of it almost instantaneously. Um, very powerful. Within 24 hours, you feel the results of it. So we fuel our bodies with the water, the Nutriburst, the sea moss gel. And again, this is the cactus, aloe vera, prickly pear, sea moss gel. The most powerful four plant combination you can get right now. It's powerful, it works. I was talking to a lady yesterday uh, she's from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, I think. Older lady. She's 72 years young, and she's feisty. <laughs> very, very feisty. But we had a very good conversation. And after talking to her uh, through a third party, she said, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to do this. She, she, wants, she wants to do it. Because she's going through a lot of medical issues that medicine, right, that the doctors have not been able to help her with. So she's willing to give this a shot. So I'm looking forward to helping her and hearing her testimony.
because she has some nerve issues also. So I told her, you go, this is what you need because cactus protects nerve cells. And, and uh, you know, so she's, she's going to have a very powerful benefit. So anyway, this is the most powerful four plant combination, cactus, prickly pear, uh, aloe vera, sea moss, gel combination. And again, because it's in gel form, it has very fast absorption. Now we have other ones also. This is mango, right? If you like fruit flavor, this is a mango flavor. This is a, I think it's a strawberry type flavor. Strawberry flavor, this is mango flavor. This is mango, strawberry, fruit flavor, sea moss gel. For those who have a little sweet tooth, well, you can have some sweet, you can have the sweet tooth, but have some healthy stuff at the same time, right? So we got all, we got elderberry, we got mango, we got all types of stuff your body needs to stay healthy and fit. Now, for those people who say, Kenneth, you know what? All that sounds good. I started exercising, uh, you know, um, I, I, what kind of smoothie, uh, what kind of shake can I have that, where, where can I get some, can I put some protein in my smoothies and stuff? Can I put some proteins in my stuff because I want to have some protein? Well, yes, you can. Let me explain this. If you're having more of a plant-based diet, right? Let's say if you're vegan, right? People say, what, where do you get your protein from? Well, you get your protein from the same places that that cow, that that bull gets the, uh, that that horse get their protein from. Now these are some very powerful animals, right? You look at a bull, you got a lot of muscle. Look at a thoroughbred racehorse, got a lot of muscle, right? Where do they get their protein? Because they don't eat meat. They get their protein source from plants. The same place I get my protein source from, and that's what allows me to have a lot of muscle, right? Get a lot of muscle. Plants, no meat, no dairy. So it is possible when you know what to do or have the right sources to have a lot of healthy protein, right, in your diet just from eating plants without the excess of amounts, th without the excess stuff that comes from eating meats because there's things in meats that you don't need, right? You can get protein from animals, but also it comes with other stuff that the body really doesn't need and that causes inflammation. That can cause other issues inside the body, right? In the long term, it can cause chronic aches and pains in your joints. And you have no idea where this stuff is coming from, but it's coming from the foods you're eating. Because one, meats have no oxygen. Dairy has no oxygen, right? Fast foods have no oxygen because it's all been cooked, all been processed. It may have some minerals and some vitamins, but it has no oxygen. So if a food you're eating does not have the number one most important nutrient of all, which is oxygen, you probably shouldn't eat too much of it because it's going to impact your body in a certain way and speed up the aging process. Now, you might not look like you're getting older on the outside. They say black don't crack, but baby, listen, if you're black and you're not having foods that have oxygen, you are cracking like crazy on the inside. Your organs are getting older very, very quickly, going through a premature aging process caused by free radicals. Free radicals are damaged cells that have, have no more use inside your body. They die. Right? So they're bouncing off the healthy cells inside your body, causing that cell to become a free radical, almost like a zombie type effect also, and it causes premature aging. The best way to describe this is by people who smoke cigarettes. A person who smokes cigarettes, right, if you look at them, their skin looks dry, but they've been smoking for a long period of time. There's something going on inside their body. Their lungs are a charcoal black. Right? They've lost some lung capacity, maybe 30%, 40% lung capacity, right? And uh, eventually it shows on the skin, right? Now, in some cases, it actually shows on the skin. The skin looks dry, wrinkled, cracky, flaky, you know, and not in every case, but it does start to impact the person's body. So that's what happens inside your body when you're eating a lot of uh, uh, meat derived foods. Now I grew up on a farm. People say, Kenneth, man, you're biased, man. You've been vegan. Yes, I have, but here's a fact. I've eaten meat a lot longer than I've been vegan. I've been eating meat for 40 years of my life. I mean, meat for 40 years of my life, right? I've been vegan for 10 years. So I can tell you all about the meat because I grew up on a farm in South Carolina. We had pork chops. We had chitlins. We had hog malls. We had uh, I never had a possum. We had squirrels, birds. We had everything you can think of on the farm, right? I pretty much ate this stuff and grew up on it, but didn't realize that those foods was tearing my body apart, causing very bad food allergies, causing very bad seasonal allergies. When God changed my diet to raw vegan, when God changed my diet to vegan and raw vegan, 
all that stuff went away. My energy increased. My skin really started to change. My energy levels, every, everything just changed. My strength, I got stronger. I, had, I slept better. I felt better. All the crunch, the aches and pains I started to get inside, uh, not my hand, uh, inside my, my ankles started to go away. Right? I had injuries in my elbow that healed a lot faster. Things just changed because now I'm getting oxygen inside my body and living enzymes instead of eating dead enzymes that you can only get from eating animal flesh. Now, I'm not trying to turn y'all into vegan. I'm just sharing some information with you to help, help you think about the foods you're putting inside your body that's going to give you a better result, a better health result. Because think about this for a second, right? Many of you probably work with computers, right? Some of you might even be computer programmers. No, you, you might work, write programs. Well, when you want to get a particular result, right? If you want that, that computer to have a particular outcome, you write a particular type of program, right? You write it down just the way it has to happen in order for it to perform that program to get you the results you want to have. Well, your body is exactly the same way. Your body is like that mainframe computer, right? Back in the days, that mainframe computers. So in order to get the results you want to get, which is excellent health, which is to feel good, which is to live good, which is to look good, right? You have to give that mainframe certain types of information in order for that program to be activated and work and produce that result you want to have. And food is that information you need to program your cells. Food is information that tells your cells what to do. That's all it is. It's just information that tells your cells, your body, what to do, what to create, what to get rid of, right? How to perform, how to develop, how to grow, right? And when you give it the proper information, the proper food, it gives you most times the proper results you want to have, about 99% of the time. But when you start to incorporate some bad information, right? It's not, it's not the best information. It's a little bit of crooked information, or misinformed information, and you program it by eating it, right? You're programming your cells by eating it, guess what? Over a period of time, and everybody's different, it may happen suddenly for some people, may happen in a decade for other people, may happen 30, 40 years down the road for other people. You produce and get the results of what you've been programming your body for all your life. And sometimes, for many people, about 30% of the United, people in the United States, maybe a little bit more than that, 35%, almost 40% of the people in the world, is aches and pains, is sleep issues, is anxiety, is depression, is chronic fatigue, is metabolic syndrome, is cancer, is diabetes, is everything you don't want to have. But now that you've got it, you, you, you want to you get rid of it. What can I do to get rid of this stuff? What do I have to do? And then you have to put in a new program, get new information to get a new result. And for some people, that's hard. Because if you've been eating a certain way for 40 years of your life, right, you grew up loving that stuff. You grew up craving that stuff. And now you have to do something a little bit different. It's a challenge. It's hard. But when you put things into perspective, unless I do this differently, Understandingly, understand, knowing that you're going to always be suffering with what you don't want to have. You're going to always be taking these medications and oftentimes be given more medication as a result. So now you have to make some lifestyle changes, right? Decide to do things differently to reverse the course of your life so you can feel better, you can look better, you can live better, and feel vibrant and not worry about. What time to take your next med? Or what time to, 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 when's the next time to inject yourself? Right? Or having table conversation about who your cardiologist is or who, who's your diabetes doctor. Right? That should be common conversation. That should be common table talk. Right? You should be talking about your family, about your goals, about the things, about your accomplishments, things you want to achieve. Not about your meds. <laughs> Not about who your, who's your doctor. Not about how many doctors you got. Right? That's, that's, that's backwards. You want to change all that stuff and get your life back. Right? 52 years young, I'm not on any meds. 
I don't catch colds. I don't get sick. I don't get migraines. I have no food allergies, no hay fever. I didn't always have that. I used to get very bad headaches. I used to have very bad hay fever. I used to have food allergies like beans and peas, but because I've changed my lifestyle, changed the foods I've eaten, done things differently, I don't have that anymore. Right? It, I'm free from all that. And I thank God for it. And I feel better. And I get stronger and stronger every single year. And now I show people how to do exactly the same thing. I've been blessed and graced by God to help people reverse things inside their body that doctors said they will have for the rest of their life. I've been able to show them differently. They say, you know what? If you do exactly what I tell you to do, you're going to have this result. And they followed it in 30 days or three months or nine months. Their life has changed forever. People who probably should have died, right? I don't say should have. People who probably would have been dead are now still alive years later because they followed a program. People who had cancer who probably would have died are still alive today years later, cancer-free, reversed, because they followed a program. And I've been able to help them do that. We've been able to help them do that with different types of holistic approaches, right? So it's very important to, going back to the topic, exercise, right, is the foundation, is one of the foundations to being healthy, to being vibrant. Because you can have a great diet, right? You can have the best diet in the world, but unless you're doing something to increase your bone mass, to increase your muscular strength, your muscular endurance, to strengthen your heart, then guess what? You are a house waiting to fall down at some point. Because now your muscles have gotten weaker, your bones have gotten weaker, your heart has gotten weaker, but you got a good diet. <laughs> but but, but, but you, got a, you got a fantastic diet, but you're not building your body. You have to build your body. You have to plan to, to be here. For your family, for yourself, for your children, whatever the case is, you have to make a plan to be here. Keep it simple so you can do it. Don't make up a plan and, oh, God, that's so, that's so hard. I don't feel like doing this today. Make a simple plan, right? Just become active. Just become more active. And as you become more active, you'll win. Now, let me talk about the protein, right? Man, I, I really get, get into this. I, I love talking about this health, health and fitness stuff. Now, the protein, for those of you who want to use protein, people say, well, Kenneth, what's the best protein to take? What kind of protein can I take? Well, if you're going to use a protein, there's, there's a couple of proteins that I suggest. One we have, uh, Maya takes it more than I do. Um, I very seldom use protein. I just eat, just eat foods, just eat foods. But, but Maya takes the protein a lot more than I do. But at times I do take the protein. It's a plant-based protein, and it's called the Matrix. Now, the matrix is a powerful, powerful plant-based protein. And then, let me just read off some of the things we have in here. One that has herbs, right? Now, how many protein powders do you know that has herbs in it? <laughs> herbs, raw herbs, right? So, it's made from plants. Uh, I think one scoop is, what, 20? I think one scoop, or one scoop is 21 grams of protein, right? So, it's very, very good. It's clean protein. And this is a combination of pea protein, uh, chia seeds, organic brown rice protein, organic millet, organic quinoa, and did I leave anything else out? So you got chia, you got organic brown rice protein, you got pea protein, uh, and you have ashwagandha. We got some of that over there. Ashwagandha root is a herb, the powerful, powerful herb. Uh, we got uh, maca roots are also powerful, and also Ganoderma. That's a mushroom. So it's very, very good. Um, so plus it has a lot of other things in there also. But this is the protein that we use, 21 grams of protein per serving, and it's flavored. It's vanilla, naturally vanilla flavored protein. And this is, this is a, a, you know, got 15 servings per container. One scoop is all you need. You can put it in a smoothie, uh, preferably a smoothie. Don't put it in dairy, right? You don't want to mix uh, a plant-based protein with a dairy product like milk. You want to keep everything plant-based. So even if you're not vegan, right, you make, if you want to use this, you can use this. It's very, very powerful because, again, it has herbs in it. And the herbs have powerful effects on the body. So you want to use this like in a smoothie. A smoothie is things that are made from fruit that has fruit 
or celery or seeds or things of that nature with a plant-based protein. A shake is, is anything that has milk in it. So shakes and smoothies are different. They're used interchangeably, but a shake, when, when the person says they have a shake, that means it's got some type of dairy product in it. Milk, ice cream, yogurt, something like that. A smoothie, fruit, vegetables, seeds, something like that, maybe some sea moss, whatever the case is, it all comes from plants. It's even blended with plants. Uh, blended with a plant based like maybe almond milk or uh, hemp milk, something like that, even water, something of that nature. So this is the plant, the plant protein powder, and you can get this from our website. Um, and again, it's very good. You can blend this with fruit and vegetables. And this company, this thing you can use this with like Nutriburst or the NRG. You know, if you exercise a lot, you can take this along with it, the smoothie. It keeps you full. Um, and again, you want to drink water, right? Now you make sure you get water. The water helps metabolize the protein. Helps break down the protein so your body can digest it. So those are some things that we do on a daily basis. Uh, smoothies at least once, twice a day, depending on what the case is. Maybe a nice salad or a fruit bowl or a vegetable bowl, whatever the case is. Uh, but you want to make sure you stay hydrated at all the time, right? And make sure the water you're getting is not done through reverse osmosis. It's an alkaline water, naturally alkaline water. That's what you want to have, right? So aside from that, oh, let me talk about this right quick. Now, if you have, if any of you have any questions, hey, hey, Mary, how you doing? Thanks for sharing, thanks for sharing my, my, my live presentation. Let me say hello to everybody here on the live, Sharon, Brown, Shawanda Howard. Hello, Shawanda. Uh, haven't seen, spoken to you in a while. Derek Patterson, thanks for watching, and everybody else on here as well. Um, but you want to exercise. You, you have to exercise, right? It, 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 see, here's, here's what happens. Here's, here's one reason why people are suffering from a lot of chronic aches and pains. Because they don't exercise. <laughs> the body, you don't use the body, it gets stiff. It will tighten up on you. It's like, it's like walking rigor mortis, right? You're walking, you're alive, but you're moving. You feel like you got rigor mortis because everything's stiff. Everything's tight. You have no flexibility, right? And here's why it's important to stretch also. See, I stretch every single day. Maya stretches, right, pretty much every single day. It's important to stretch because when you stretch, stretching has several effects on the body. One, it helps you relax, right? Two, it increases the circulation to those muscles, those parts of the body that were not getting enough oxygen or blood circulation, right? So it, those muscles start to relax. And as they relax, less tense, you get better circulation, better respiration. You can breathe a lot better. You feel less tense. You just feel like, oh, I, I can just go for a nap right now when you do it the right way. And so it also can help prolong your life. So stressing is very beneficial. And aside from that, it makes you more flexible, right? So if you weren't able to touch your toes at one point, eventually you'll be able to touch your toes. So it has a lot of benefits for the body. So I stretch every single day. So if you're not stretching, eventually you're gonna to start to tighten up. If you're not already tightening up, you're gonna eventually start to tighten up in your body, in your muscles, right? You have creaks and, and also you're gonna feel like real stiff, right? It real, your body's gonna be, be up under a lot of pressure because you're not relieving that pressure by stretching. So it's important to stretch every single morning, right? And stretch before you go to bed at night because it helps you relax. Right, so after you have that, right, let's say uh, before you go to bed at night, you have some water, eight ounces of water, six ounces of water, do a light stretching routine, kind of help the body relax. So you go to bed, you go, you're sleeping in a relaxed state. You wake up feeling a bit more refreshed and relaxed. Have some more water and you wake up, right? Keep the body fueled, right? Keep that oil in that body, keep those gears oiled up. And now you're living a healthier lifestyle, plus you're also preventing heart attacks because you're drinking water, because you're stretching, because you're relaxing. So there's a lot of things to do. All these things I just mentioned plays a huge part in health and wellness. So once again, we drink water before we go to bed, we wake up in the morning. So hold that thought. Got another quick phone call. Be right back to close it out.
Okay, I have to close this out. That's my wife calling. She got a uh, situation going on. So listen, for more information, comment on this live presentation. Um, inbox me about the Nutriburst, about the CMOS gel, about the protein powder, whatever the case is, and I'll show you how to win. Thanks for watching. The President of God of me, bless the President of God of you. Let's keep winning. Go out there and get some exercise. Build that muscle. It's time for you to win. Have a blessed day. Talk to you soon.